Alright, so now we're going to be doing the last layer horizontal edges. So let's first replace the corners so that they're in the right color regions here so we don't get confused. So what we're going to be doing is just placing any of the edge pieces from across down into the horizontal. And so this algorithm is going to be switching the opposite edge over here to the front horizontal edge here. So first of all, let's just see what we have here. So like orange and blue obviously could go directly in the switch over here. So blue is matching to the left side. And so whenever the top color is going to the left, we're going to be doing this to get this up here, and then we match the blue down here. So that's just starting two steps. So the full sequence goes like this. We turn it out of the way so that it doesn't get disturbed later. And then you turn this back that just completed the switch over here, and then we turn everything back to where we started, and you have this corner, uh, this edge piece switched with that one successfully. And then you have a yellow blue here that wants to go here. So blue this time wants to go to the right, and so then you start with your right face and you bring this down so that they go together and then you twist this out of the way so that you have space for this to come up this to go back and this to go back to where it started so with this edge piece complete and then you have a green orange piece but right across from it is blue-orange, which is already complete, and it actually needs to go there. So what we need to do first is actually bring this corner, uh, this edge piece around to this position, right across from where it needs to go. So in order to do that, we can just do an edge cycle, where we start off like this, and then come down out, out, in, in, and that does an edge switch counterclockwise. And then we can just do that again to get green, orange here. You could also reverse the order in which you turn, start turning the out, out, in, in, in order to get it to go counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, but just to be less confusing, if you don't need to be speed cubing or whatever, then this works just was just as well. Mm, orange and green coming down here, so orange is to the left, so what you need to do is turn it up here, down there, turn it out of the way here, turn this back, this back, and replace this. So this is good. Mm, finally, or yellow and pink. So that needs to go here. So again, we are just going to be cycling these three out, out, in, in, and out, out, in, in. So yellow and pink will go here. And yellow is to the right side, so all you have to do is turn this up, get this down, matching, turn it out of the way, get this up, this back, and replace everything. So now everything in the horizontal top layer is also finished for the edges. Alright, so finally we need to have the last layer top edges oriented properly. So Basically what you can do is the same thing as before when we wanted to move the edge pieces in order to get them across from where they needed to go. This one is actually more straightforward. All you have to do is get it to go to the right place. 
Um, so, first of all, you just need to see that blue is already in the correct position here, and if we cycle, we want to have the final remaining uh, pieces be on this sort of shape. And displaced would be like that and like that. So we don't want a final sort of shift where two of them are oriented correctly and you have to cycle something like this because there isn't a algorithm specifically for that. So you want to get it to a final state where only three, uh, like this sort of orientation, or this, or this, still need to be cycled. So first of all, in order to get that to happen, we need to either solve the pink first, or the green first. So what we can do here is just place the green over here. So that's just a clockwise rotation, and we can just do that with the out, out, in, in, starting from the left. So the green is already here. And then finally, we're left with the three over here that need to be oriented. So this also needs to go clockwise. Same thing. Easily enough, we get to here. So finally, we just have these two pieces that need to switch, where the gray needs to come up for two pieces. And so we actually want to have two of them adjacent to each other. So we're just going to be starting this switching algorithm um, by covering this and this so that both of these get switched and eventually it'll be the yellow on top and the gray over here. And then we can do the algorithm again for these two edges to get the whole crystal completed. So we're, this one's actually kind of long, um, but kind of also repetitive, so that towards the end you're just undoing what you did before. So you start off with this corner facing you, with these two corner uh, edge pieces that are going to flip. So you start with this, and note here that you're turning the entire cube counterclockwise so that another corner is facing you and you repeat that move and then you turn the whole cube count counterclockwise again and now you reverse your steps so you start from this side going this way and then coming back and then you turn the crystal clockwise instead. And then you do this. And then you turn it again to see where you started from. So obviously the pink switched and the yellow switched as well. So basically now we just have to complete that cycle once more to get these two to flip and the puzzle will be complete. So just be careful when you're turning the whole cube because Sometimes it is easy to lose track of where you are in the algorithm and then end up misplacing stuff. So turning it that way and then this sequence, turning the whole cube counterclockwise again, starting from the right this time, and then turning it clockwise basically doing that whole edge shift cycle. And uh, there we have it. You have a complete Pyraminx crystal. Thanks for watching.